Let us pray. Almighty God, the creator and ruler of heaven and earth, we beseech thee to inspire and guide all our actions so that we may always walk in the path of justice, love, and charity to one another. Help us with thy grace to do only those things that promote the unity, peace, happiness, and prosperity of Nigeria in general and Lagos State in particular. Amen. Good afternoon, distinguished colleagues. We are all welcome to today's sitting. A sincere apology for the late commencement of today's plenary. Let us quickly go through the thoughts and proceedings of Thursday, Thursday 16, November Ojuwe ketale lo gon no gon Acho fe olumegbo Olidari motor ride lo jo yi oruko mi de yo ni bi ti awon ti ko wa Akore agbe ba sha to se Ojuwe kenile lo gon Ojuwe karo de la dofa ati se agbeye o akon sile jiro royi ti o koja ni ojo bo ojo kerin di logo osu kokola odun keta le loko le legba asifi o ntelu any message from the governor right honorable speaker sir distinguished honorable members good afternoon sir good afternoon ma'am yes sir we receive a letter from mr governor dated november 20th 2023 with your kind permission, sir, I saw it. Right. The letter is titled, Request for Clearance for the Appointment of One Honorable Commissioner and Five Special Advisors, Cabinet Rank. Dear Honorable Speaker, I trust this letter meets you in good health and high spirits. This letter is to formally bring to your attention and seek the clearance of the esteemed Lagos State House of Assembly for the appointment of one honorable commissioner in the form of Mr. Abiodun Ogunleye, a well-established and multivaried energy, energy specialist, and five special advisors of cabinet rank as part of my intention to further strengthen the executive arm of our administration for effective service to the people of Lagos State. It is therefore in this vein 
that I humbly seek the kind consideration and clearance of the Right Honorable Speaker and members of the House of Assembly for the appointment of the above revived Honorable Commissioner and five special advisors on cabinet ranks, of cabinet ranks. While looking forward to your usual prompt response, please accept this, the assurances of my highest regards for your good self and the entire members of our esteemed State House of Assembly. Signed, Babajide Olushola Sonwolu, Governor of Lagos State. Any other announcement? There is none, sir. Petition? None, sir. Matter of other public importance? Personal explanations? I should free all my more. Thank you very much, Right Honourable Speaker. The world celebrated International Men's Day a couple of days back, a day dedicated to recognizing the importance and contribution of men in our society. This day serves as a reminder to, our, to the crucial role our men plays in shaping our society, hence they deserve to be acknowledged and appreciated. International Men's Day is not about promoting superiority or dominance. It's about understanding equality and where to draw the lines. In the book of Genesis, verse Chapter 2, verse 18, the Lord said, The Lord God made a woman from the rib, it was from the rib he had taken out from Adam. Also in the Quran, chapter 4, verse 1, Surah told Lisa, we, we were all created from a man's rib. It is said behind every successful man, there is a progressive man, either a father, brother, uncle, or a husband. International Men's Day is an opportunity to address the challenges and issues faced by our men to create a more inclusive and supportive environment for them, from their tender from ATVS years to becoming real men. One of the key issues that the International Day aims to highlight is men's mental health. Society often expects men to be strong, resilient, and stoic, discouraging them from expressing their emotions freely. This societal pressure can lead to feelings of isolation, depression, anger, and anxieties. It is essential that we break the stigma surrounding men's mental health and encouraging an open conversation, providing them with the opportunity and support that they need. Another significant aspect is in celebrating these days, promoting positive male roles, male role models, who embodies qualities such as empathy, compassion, respect, and ambition. We can inspire the future generation together, just like our right honorable speaker. Men have the power to shape in the lives of those around them, especially young boys who look up to them. Furthermore, aside from this above sensitization, men's health, father, fatherhood, and promoting gender equality are part of the reasons why we celebrate this day. Men should face health challenges, and it is crucial that, that they have the access to proper health care and support system. Fatherhood is a beautiful journey, and it is essential to recognize and appreciate the roles of fathers in nurturing and raising their children. Gender equality is not just about women issues. It affects every single one of us by advocating for gender equality. We create a more balanced and harmonious society for both our men and women. Today, I celebrate the achievement and contribution of our men from all walks of life. I acknowledge their struggles, support, and well-being, and empowering them to be the best version of themselves so we can thrive equally. In conclusion, the International Men's Day is a reminder that men, just like women, are an integral part of our society. It is a call to action which addresses the challenges they face, promote and their well-being, and create a more inclusive world for us all. Let us join hands together to work and build a nature, a society where both men and women can flourish side by side. A mother and father's son, a sister's protector, a daughter's first love, a, mother, a son's best friend, and a, wife, a wife's world. As a medium, I'll use the right honorable speaker as a contact to celebrate all 36 wonderful father, husbands, grandfathers, brothers, and uncles for being intentional and progressive-minded. I, as a woman, acknowledge all your sacrifices. Thank you for making room for us in the new world paradigm shift. Thank you for letting us grow and thrive, including us in vital decision-making in our homes, workplace, and at large, the states, and not confining us to the Hosa room. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Honorable <laughs> Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I actually wanted to speak to one of the uh, le le the letter. Okay, I'll put out your line. Come back to me. Okay. Honourable Aroma Shido. 
Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, distinguished Honorable colleagues. Good afternoon. Um, Mr. Speaker, it's just to appreciate and also to uh, say a big thank you to my Honorable colleagues, Honorable Lara Olumegbon. Thank you so, so very much uh, for those wonderful words uh, you have used in celebrating men. And we can, nobody can celebrate us than ourselves. Uh, it's just too good that all the men in the house, let's continue celebrating ourselves and also make our day more remarkable, uh, the way we celebrate uh, Women's Day. And I think uh, if we all men also pay cognizance to this, and we tend to also celebrate ourselves in uh, International Day of Men, uh, the global will also celebrate us. So it's just too good that we also deem it fit, uh, that we also celebrate ourselves year in, year out. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Honorable, uh, for look at what is it? For Lukel Safile. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise this afternoon to further eulogize our men for the strength they exhibit at all times, the courage, and the positive leadership qualities they exhibit, the independence and the assertiveness in doing things. And I must also say that where men shed tears, it's not because they are weak. It simply shows that they are humane and they are compassionate. I deeply celebrate our men. And I believe that when in due, in due time, the gender equity that the female gender we are pushing, 100% support will be given to us. Thank you. Well, we thank you for particularly the women in our Miss, for recognizing the effort of our men in our society, starting from this other chamber and this as an assembly, and to our state and our nation as a whole, recognizing their contributions, their dedication, their commitment in holding forth what we call family, society, our local government, our state, and our nation as a whole. And men, when we talk about men, we talk about real men, those who are responsible to the immediate, to the immediate family, to their society, to their local government, to their state, and the nation as a whole. And as put it, rightly put it by Honorable Osha Philip, that when men shed tears, but now they have encouraged us to shed tears. We should stop bottling it up. We should stop holding our emotion. So we should express ourselves so we can feel relaxed. So let us shed tears if there is need to shed tears. Because the tie top has negative results. So that is where you start hearing people committing suicide, you know, people diving into lagoon. But when you share tears, people around you will console you, you know, will pacify you. So you let, you let go. So it is not out of place for men to be emotional. But the most important thing is to recognize the contributions of our men, the hard work men outside there, the bus conductor, the Okada riders, you know, the shoemakers. These are people struggling, you know, to make life better for their immediate family without choosing other way around, without violating the law, without turning to crime. So we recognize them, you know, for their sweat, for everything they have done to ensure we have sanity in our society. And we must not forget our law officers, the policemen, the army, who every day day in, day out, put their lives on the line to protect all of us. So we recognize all this, and we pray Almighty Allah will continue to sustain men, give them strength, give them energy, give them life, and grant them that prosperity so they can continue to be men. So I thank you, Honorable uh, Lumegbon, for bringing this, and I thank other members also. So let us remember that we are men, 
and we have responsibility, and we must not be tired of our responsibility. Thank you very much. Yeah, Honorable Kasumu. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the kind endorsement. I was going to speak to one of the, uh, the letter read by Mr. Clark uh, concerning the, uh, the names put forward for screening of, uh, according to the letter, it said one commissioner with the name mentioned and five other uh, special advisors. I believe, sir, that the normal procedure is to actually forward the names of those who are coming into public service uh, uh, for the executive, especially when it has to do with cabinet ranking um, officers. We as the House of Assembly should be aware of those coming in and um, for the proper procedure to take place in terms of screening and um, or, or what have you. And I believe that um, this process of not mentioning names is, however, deemed as coming through the back door, which is not uh, entirely necessary. I want to trust the leadership of the House to do the needful uh, to make sure that it is pre presented accordingly. Thank you, sir. Honorable uh, Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. I also want to speak on the same letter um, read by Mr. Clark which um, obviously did not state the names. So unless I'm mistaken, um, as a member of the committee which was set up to actually carry out the exercise of the screening of the cabinet members for the governor, um, the last list that came, um, both lists that came in, they have the names fully mentioned and specified, both male and female gender. So I noticed that in this list um, that was read out by Mr. Clark, sir, that it's only the commissioner that has a name to it, which I believe was Mr. Ogule. But the five um, special advisors, there were no names attached to it, and it was not read out. And um, this is something that baffles me personally. And um, just like the deputy majority leader said, it seems like um, there is some form of uh, backdoor play here. And um, with, uh, with a humble request, right on over speaker, um, obviously, with your own permission, we would like that, um, you know, within the stipulated time of the that the Constitution has provided, we can't start allowing such to read, but maybe we should also pass information back to the Governor that the names should be specified clearly on those who he wants to appoint as special advisors, considering the fact that they are mentioned as cabinet ranking special advisors. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, sir. Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. <clears throat> I'd like to agree with the Deputy Majority Leader, sir. I think it's vitally important that they send the names of the special assistants of which they want us to screen here at this assembly. Being a member of that uh, ad hoc committee during the time, it was actually beneficial for us to receive all this information beforehand because it allows us to begin the processes which are stipulated not only under the constitution but also the business rules of this house so if we can even send them a letter back asking them please for them to re retort to us with the names of the specified persons thank you very much sir yeah i thank you for your observations i quite agree with you that it's highly necessary for us to have the identity of OP as a cabinet um, ranking. Because um, I don't think uh, <clears throat> it's proper enough for us to have members of cabinet that we don't have information about. Rather, we have the, kind of interaction before they assume their position. So I quite agree that it's necessary to know the identity of this would be cabinet ranking special advisor. So on this note, uh, we direct the, uh, Mr. Clark to write Mr. Governor to <coughs> furnish us with the names of the five SA being requested for. So, Mr. Clark, kindly write to Mr. Governor to give us the information, the names of who. They don't have to come from screening, but it is necessary for us to know who and who will become members of the 
قابلة ليدو. يا بعضنا إسبلانيشنز، ريبورتس. Before we move to order of the day, and um, for about two days now, you know, there has been viral news concerning one of our agencies, that is procurement, which has been going about. And uh, I had the privilege of having conversation with Mr. Governor. And um, the efforts to dispel the false news they have done I mean, their own press conference, you know, stating the true position of the of the news in circulation, and I quite agree with them. And they've also written to the house in respect of what's happened, even though I've not been able to lay my hands on the letter. But it is not out of place for us to put things in proper shape, to call on the committee of the house in charge of procurement, you know, to do the needful on this matter by calling procurement agencies and all other MDA is being mentioned in this uh, publication so that we can establish, you know, the, the truth of the matter in circulation. So I don't want us to further deliberate or harp on this. Just allow the chairman, I mean, the House Committee on Procurement to do the needful and do, you know, very thorough job on this matter. So at the end of the day, we can establish the facts behind it. So I think that will be that will be helpful to all of us. So, Chairman has committee on procurement. We are calling on you and your team to invite the procurement agency to, in order to establish facts behind this publication. Yeah, order of the day, majority leader. Right Honorable Speaker, distinguished colleagues, order of the day, House of Assembly Bill Number 04, Honorable Adams MB Majority Leader, Honorable Majid F.A. Chief Whip, Honorable Kasumo A.R. Deputy Majority Leader, Honorable Engineer David S.S. Deputy Chief Whip, Honorable Said W.O. Koshofer 2, Honorable Olumo S.L. Ajiromi Ifelu Dun 1, Honorable Elliot D.O. Suru Nere 1, Honorable Akisonya A.N. Mushin 1, Honorable Adewale C.A. Ifakojai 1, Honorable Afini O.S. Lagos Island 2, Honorable Aro M.A. Ikorudu 2, Honorable Apata S.O. Shomulu 2, Honorable Orekoya A. Shomulu 1, Honorable Mrs. Lawal Olumegbon O.O. Lagos Island 1, Honorable Ajomale O.O. Oshori Solo 2, Honorable Lawal, A.M. Apapa 2. With your kind permission, Mr. Speaker, sir, may I move that a bill for a law to amend the Lagos State Lotteries and Gaming Authority Law 2021 be read for the second time? I so move, sir. Honorable Lawal, I know. Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, I rise to second the motion being moved by the majority leader. All in favor say aye. It was against name, the eyes have it. <coughs> Mr. Clark. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Distinguished Honorable Members, it is a great privilege and honor for me to read for the second time a bill for a law to amend the Lagos State Lottery and Gaming Authority law for the second time. 2021 for the second time. I saw it, sir. Yeah, who has the light? 
Good afternoon, Mr. Mr. Good afternoon, Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues. In the creation of the new section, new section of the 96, it's going to give a broader section to the law we are talking about because the offenses are clearly stipulated here. The offenses are specific, so which means the former one we had was nimble, but like this one is specific, which means the law has a categorical aspect to deal with who and who and what offenses that you'll be looking at. Again, it enhances regulation, robust synergy between the agency and the operator. Because as a regulatory agency, there must be control, there must be regulation, there must be, uh, there must be supervision in view to investigate and identify sharp practices within the gaming activities. All the gaming activities are now being going to be guided investigate like illegal gaming action and sanction are going to be limited to airing operators. So, and the license is now going to be regulated. I believe that this law is timely and high, and it's going to give credence to the law that was created in 2021 in relation to the gaming and lottery law. So if this alteration are considered by this August House, I feel it's going to give more credence to the law that we are going to make. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Majid. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, sir. The amendment proposed is very straightforward. It will address the issues of the idle fund with the agency. Section 25, subsection 2, talks about the percentage to be retained by the agency, while section 26, subsection 1, spell out how the remaining balance will be used for developmental projects and securities of life and properties within the state. Thank you, sir. Honorable <clears throat> Thank you, right honorable speaker. Um, the amendments are very apt, sir, but as a legislator and somebody who goes through the appropriation process yearly, sir, there are a few things that give me small cause for concern. Um, initially, sir, the section 26 that is amended that stipulates the changes in all the percentages that each of the different MDAs would collect, it doesn't actually stipulate what they can or cannot do with those monies that they receive. I would like it if there was a caveat or a section in this law that spoke to how they are supposed to ensure they appropriate that money back with the House of Assembly. The same thing goes, sir, for... Yes, sir, it's the same section, but... 26F, which talks about a further 15% to be spent at the governor's discretion. Once again, sir, I believe as the appropriating house for the state, we should be able to have some input into how that money is actually expended. Thank you, sir. Honorable Luma. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, uh, this amendment is uh, very hard, like my colleague said and it will be for the benefit of the state in, when you look at it on the overall terms. The sections have already spelled out how this money will be used. What we know, and we know clearly, is that the government's act of social responsibility will be enhanced because we all know the intervention project, this very uh, law can enhance with the lottery board. We see that the money for good cause purposes in the law will be such that it will be used in a way that will enhance the overall benefit to the state. Thank you very much, sir. Honorable Shao. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good afternoon, honorable colleagues. Mr. Speaker, permit me to make a few comments about this particular bill. Oh, yes. Clause 1, we talked about basically talks about the dedicated account or dedicated revenue of the authority. Because what he's talking about is the funds that will be retained by the authority from the total funds that they've made. So what the authority is asking this house to look at is that from 10%, the authority wants to use 30%. I'm just stating what is here. 
the 30 percent the money the authority takes which is the dedicated account is used for the operational cost salaries and so on and so forth that is what that money is for so asking to move from 10 percent to 30 percent it's something we really should look at the total earning as you speak to the mic uh, uh -huh. sorry mr speaker the total earning of the of the authority in a year runs to over 78 billion naira. So 10% as it is currently is about 800 million naira. When it goes to 30%, that's about 2.4 billion naira. The remaining, the money comes from a good cause money, which is 70, which will now be 70%. So my honourable colleague has have said that we need more money to provide services for the community. It, the money will come out of that money. So that would actually reduce what is going to go to the community to be spent on infrastructure health, sports, security, and all the item, all the points that we've itemized within the good cause expenditure. So it's something we could look at. Yes, they can have funding issues, maybe 20%, 15%, and so on and so forth. But I think 30% can be a very tall call with respect to that. And the distribution of a good cause money, which is being readjusted, which is reducing the infrastructure portion of it by 5% and adding it to what Mr. Governor will probably have discretion to spend. Well, it's neither here or there. Everything goes to the state expenditure. The key thing I would like to mention also is that these funds should be tied to a level of appropriation. Whether the funds should be used for things that are already in the appropriation law rather than things that are outside it. So it's very necessary that this is considered when this bill is hopefully committed to the appropriate committee. Mr. Speaker, there is something that is also, well, not mentioned there, but something I've observed about the authority's law. The authority plows back whatever is left. They roll it over into the following year. An agency of, there's a body of government, agency of government. Whatever fund that is left to the authority at the end of a year should go into the chest. It should go back into the chest so that we can be reappropriated with other funds, or at least they must make account of it so that that fund is available, not sitting in one account and being for investment, which will bring 5, 10% as the case may be. So it's very key that that is looked at when we're looking at this bill. Um, finally, Mr. Speaker, I think it's a good opportunity to look at the law that is currently existing so that other adjustments that are required will be made to the, to the, to the bill. Um, I will support that the bill goes into second reading if the House permits. Thank you. Um, Honorable Council. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to also lend my voice to this uh, bill. Do uh, general outlook, it makes the bill, it makes the law, it will make the law more robust with the, with the recent uh, amendments. But I would like to pay particular attention to uh, Clause 3, uh, which is the 26, that talks about um, the sharing formula of the distribution. What gives me particular reason to worry is the part that has to do with the implementation and the utilization of these funds. Say, for example, uh, if you go to the Sports Trust Fund, which has been existing in there for um, quite some time before the amendment, the utilization of that fund was not, uh, was not effective enough. And I believe that if funds are just sitting there and lying there without effectively uh, utilizing them and released to these appropriate uh, agencies uh, uh, that it has been distributed to, then there will be no reason for the amendment. But having said that, the, uh, the law's amendment is coming at a very apt time and necessary. Thank you. Honorable Satonji. Dear Honorable Speaker, my colleagues, I want to thank you for this opportunity. This amendment is very, very apt. My concern is about the sharing formula as enunciated by my colleagues. The 30% that has been, has been retained by the agency it's too much. Then when we're talking of social security, like education and other areas on section 25 of the bill, 
that to be to increase because that's that of education as well as it has to do with provision of infrastructure we should increase that percentage from 30 percent to 30. that is my concern about this agreement thank you sir yeah thank you for your contributions on this and I quite agree this is an opportunity for us to further look at the law beyond the amendment being sought for. It gives us that uh, leverage to look at the whole package of the law so that we can introduce new development to the agency and also restructure the financial um, activities of the agency as rightly explained by some of our colleagues looking at the sharing formula and looking at uh, the, what is it called, the dedicated fund of the agency. And whatever that is left at the end of the day, because it should go back to the consolidated fund for the agency to hold on to the previous fund up to the following year and still retaining. And the way w the fund is being expended, I think it's too, just too restricted. It should be an open thing, and it should give that uh, whatever committee that has uh, um, oversight function over it the opportunity and privilege to know and read the activities of the of the agency. I quite agree with you, but there's need for us also to commend the agency for the good job they've been doing, the nature of fund they've been able to generate. So we commend them for that, but there's a need to be open so that we know what is happening to whatever they have achieved and how they are being, I mean, the fund is being expended. So the bill is hereby committed to ask committee on finance and to report back in two weeks. Very the leader. Yeah, I'm a very leader. Right Honorable Speaker, distinguished colleagues, I have the approval of the Right Honorable Speaker to move that this house adjourn till Monday, 27th of November 2023 at 12 p.m. I so move, sir. Honorable Jomali. <coughs> right Honorable Speaker, I rise to second the motion as moved by the Majority Leader. All in favor say aye. aye. Those against nay, the ayes are rich. This house stands adjourned to Monday 27th, November 2023 at 12 noon prompt. I rise. <laughs>